here we are. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks, thanks for attending today's uh, working group meeting. I believe this may be our fourth working group meeting. Um, and um, I believe everyone uh, in attendance um, has joined us in, in, in the previous meeting, so I don't think we need to go around and do introductions. Um, so uh, I'm looking at the agenda. Um, so if we go in order, um, the next agenda item is, drum roll please, is the survey gift card drawing. I believe Becky will be in charge of that. Yeah, so um, I took all of the responses. We, I, I had originally done it, um, we had originally said through March 31st, but then we, add, we added a couple surveys. So we are doing the drawing through, um, through today. Um, and so I have, I'll share my, I have 410 people put in um, their names and contact information for the drawing. And I just do a random number generator. So I'm gonna share my screen so you can all see that. Um, so we just didn't do a number between one and 10. And so the first one is 29 and that comes up as, can you all see the names now on my screen or not? No. No, no. okay. Just Let see me put that. Numbers, a minimum okay. or maximum. <laughs> And number 29. All right. Um, here. Okay. So number 29 is hmm. oops. Uh, Amy Hirsch. Um, and congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, Come on I'm down. I'm just going to write this down. <laughs> um, and the second one, 257. So that one. You know, I, what I actually like about this list of names is I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, just as a quick, quick look. So number 257 is Janet Diaz. Congratulations. <laughs> Next one. We have a third one. Is it this is this the third and last one? Uh we said five. Oh, five. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Okay. Hope you guys have all those gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Now I'm starting to see. Yeah. So is anyone Ellen Rose Sabulis? Oh, I know her. <laughs> Great. Uh, and then number four is 405. And that is the bottom. Uh, Kathy Axelson Berry. Yes. And number 250. And the final survey gift card <laughs> goes to Ken Rannan. Oh, that's our former nurse, our, re our nurse that oh, recently retired. Nice. So that's good. Wow. That's a, that sounds like an inside job. <laughs> she's, re she's retired. <laughs> and we want to uh, send a special thanks out to the Amherst Area uh, Chamber of Commerce for graciously donating, I believe, three of the gift cards um, that are uh, worth $50 each that um, that um, can be spent at any uh, Amherst area business. And where did, uh, I believe they they funded three gift cards and did PVPC fund for two cards? I, I can't really recall. 
have to look back. I thought you guys were doing five, maybe, but we'll figure it out. Maybe, uh, I can't remember, Haley. Was it? Was I think it's it, all five from oh, all the five. Chamber of okay. Commerce. Great. Oh, that was oh, very generous. Um, okay. So you guys, I'll send the contact information, and I guess Haley, you guys can contact them. Yeah. Usually best because they won't recognize my phone number. <laughs> Oh, that'll be a good phone. That that'll be a good task for yeah, anyone that's the that best. calls. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. <laughs> Is that yeah. going to be an article in the paper about there that? About the uh, names? I yeah. was thinking about putting them in the senior spirit because I know folks do love to know who gets who got the gift cards. Yeah, it might, so. might make a nice a public interest article too. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. That might be nice actually as um Maybe when the survey is mm. results and analysis is maybe when that's finalized. Sure. Um, or close to being finalized, um, I might be like, oh, and here's the survey results and here are those lucky winners. Yeah. Or it could be a really good plug for the listening sessions. If they there did a little free feature exactly. and the uh, oh, nice. Yeah, why not spread it out and get two hits out of it? Yeah, there you use go. it. Yes. Okay. Good idea, Chad. Okay. So the um, next item, or do you want to take uh, take that on, Becky? I was going to say the next item on the agenda is discussion of survey status. Yeah, so, so we have um, 853 responses, which is amazing. Um, and sort of working multiple documents here, but um, I'm going to start with the um, analysis that Nicole did um, for, uh, I believe, the housing trust meeting. Um, so at that time, there were 184 English mailed responses. It looks like 242 said they got it in the mail. Um, so that was that question on the survey. So can I interrupt like, you? Could you make that the whole yeah. page? Yeah, I just have the updated information on the right, but I can just say it, I guess. Let's oh, see. sorry. Oops. I get the right. Uh, okay, there we go. Sorry, it's kind of small. Yeah, so when um, Nicole looked at it, when there were 801 responses, um, and there's still only three Spanish convenience responses. So, um, fortunately, we didn't get a lot um, filled out in Spanish. Um, but what do you mean by did. convenience, uh, Becky? What, um, well, we had a different different um, uh, links based on whether it was mailed or handed out in, in other ways. Um, so we just called those convenience rather than mailed. Oh, um, okay. yeah. Is there a um, internet um, number? Filled out online. Online. Um, yeah, I think those are the, well, nice. yeah, those are supposed to be the convenience ones, the 614, but some of the mailed ones I know were filled out um, on the link. So I think, yeah, we'll look into that a little further. Um, 242 said they received it in the mail. So I think that means that if only 184 were were um, typed into that link. Then that means the rest of the 242 they took the link that was on the actual survey. Um, but that's a good question. We will look at that a little more just to to figure the out how many. By uh, race, uh, I think um, it's going to give us some good information on uh, race uh, response rate, uh, male versus internet or other for future use in the town concerning outreach. Okay. We have um, community engagement officers by our new charter. 
uh -huh. that, that may benefit. I'd like to see this for more than just um, our purposes. This is one reason I'm saying I'm hoping the raw data is available to many uh, communities. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to, um, I mean, we did, we'll just, when we, when we close the survey, we can do a spreadsheet of the data, um, and then it will also be available through SurveyMonkey charts. Um, and with the spreadsheet, we'll just take off the, um, the names that were entered just for, for anonymity purposes, um, but we can certainly provide that spreadsheet. Um, you guys are working hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's see the other information she looked at. So um, when Nicole analyzed it, she did, um, and feel free to jump in, John. I know this is all data that John requested from Nicole. And so they worked on this a little bit. Um, there were... At that time on 410, there were 34 Black or African American responses. Now we have 36, and it's 4.27% um, of the total. Um, so a few more others were were submitted also at that at on the fourth. It was 4.4%, um, or no, 4.29%. So it's it's very close. So the um, we were also looking at the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative Community Profile of um, what's the race and ethnicity of people over 65, since that was generally the target audience for the survey, and that was 4.4%. So that's good. We're very, I think we're getting really close to, you know, the actual representation that's out there. Um, Hispanic, uh, we got 21 responses, so that's 2.49% of the total. Um, and the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborate is 1.8. So there's actually have more Hispanic responses than the, the estimates. Um, Asian, we got 23 responses and um, Mass, so that was 2.73% and Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative estimate was 1.8. Um, I should say the Mass Healthy Aging Collaborative data is also from probably 2016. Um, so it's a little bit old. There's probably a little more diversity now, but I think it overall um, is a really good indication of, you know, you guys did a great job of doing outreach um, to, to these communities of color um, and especially older adult communities of color is really sometimes hard to um, hard to get to. So um, I applaud all of the efforts that, that have gone into really getting the survey out there and getting some good responses. Um, more than one race, we got 29 responses, so 3.44%. Um, and Mass Healthy Agent Collaborative data was 1.9%. So um, that's all really good. Um, let's see, the share this other sheet here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of small, but I was trying to show um, the question of how you got the survey. And, Could you zoom in? Yeah, let's see. You can do it at the bottom, right? Yeah, or there. Oh, right. So 242 received in the mail, 101 said someone I know personally. So that's a really good outreach effort. 118 said the Amherst Neighbors newsletter. That's another great one. 192 said other. Um, but I think a lot of people typed in um, some of these same responses. So we'll have to look at those a little more closely. Um, let's see, meal distribution, 15, Jones Library, Senior Spirit, um, Amherst Survival Center, Amherst Indy, Engage Amherst. Um, so we can try to compile all the other responses also, but um, 
the mailing was really great and uh, someone I know personally. So I think that that all also speaks to the, the good outreach efforts that that happened. I just want to make a comment about the mail returns. Um, 242 is out of 500 mailed surveys. So that means we got about a 48% return rate with just two waves of the mail survey, which is incredibly good. Yeah. Uh, if we'd had the time and resources, honestly, we could have done another wave or two and boosted the numbers up higher. Mm. But I feel like uh, we'll probably get very close, maybe even over 50% before uh, the end of the month, because I'm still getting mailed surveys back. There are uh, about one a day Wow, sitting that's in great. our post office box. So as you said, Becky, that's really worked out very, very well. Yeah. And I and did all of those have a, a um, stamp envelope in them or just the first wave? No, they all did. The second wave had that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sorry, did the second wave go to the same group? Uh, yes and no, Liz. We tried to eliminate people who responded to the first wave. Oh, so right. the second wave was supposed to only to get go to oh. people who didn't respond the first time. But um, for people who responded on the internet, we didn't know their identities. So we double mailed or mailed a second unnecessary mm -hmm. survey to them. But better do that than uh, miss people. Mm hmm. So is the drawing just done on the internet responders? No, no the drawing was, was any, everybody. Yeah, or, anyone who entered their name on the survey. So um, oh. that would have been, you know, if they entered it on the hard copy, someone else would have typed it in. Or the, Okay. Yeah. So John, how many more do you have to enter or do you have people to help with that? I think, um, we're okay with that. Uh, I okay. just picked up three or four at the post office yesterday okay. so those need to be entered I, I like I said I think we you know maybe we'll see 10 more to be entered total I think we're pretty okay. close to where we'll be at the end of the uh at the end of April great okay any other questions on the responses so far well that's really great that 48 percent amazing <clears throat> that's great I have a question about how we're going to um, display the comments on the surveys. I mean, it's easy enough to document the, the numbers of things, but the comments that people make, the narrative, that's pretty important for people to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, we can certainly put that in the, um, in the appendix, but also... Um, I think we're going to want to pull some out. Um, and Haley had requested um, the data by age or those responses by age, which is a really interesting um, comments, you know, based on the different age groups. I think that's going to tell us a lot too. So that yeah. might be a good way to, to display it is just by age, what the comments were. Yeah. yeah All I'm of those comments were put into the database. Um, either by people doing it on themselves online or by the people who did data entry. So we have all of that available, Rosemary. Good. And I'm just thinking out loud, uh, per, um, perhaps um, maybe not all the comments, but uh, a good sample of comments could be featured as part of like the listening sessions mm -hmm. and maybe by by that, you know, comments for that particular listening session, for instance, if there's comments about housing, we could do a sample of, of, of you know, um, yeah, of That'd them and maybe they're by theme, maybe there's a lot of comments about you know, uh, you know, a subset of, of housing issues or, you know, sidewalk issues or what, or what have you. As I okay. tabulated, I didn't do a whole bunch. I don't know if it was 25 or exactly how many. There seemed to be some themes now. Yeah. And with that is my mind works in a certain way. It might not be the same as someone else. If somebody goes through them, I hope it's one person. So they, so they stay with that. Um, most of the themes that I saw were about the senior center. Uh, people wanted to add comments in different ways. So I'd like to see that done, uh, gathered. Um, and if, uh, 
you know, it's cumbersome. I can I can do that. Okay. I, I have a list. I can definitely generate comments before the listening sessions. And then I'll just check back in with you, Becky, at the end for any new comments that I didn't get before. Okay. So are you what are you, are you saying, Haley, that you would start I'll pull sorting up the quotes. them? Or? Yeah, because there are a lot of consistent things, especially regarding sidewalks, transportation, the senior center, um, okay. the tax rate here in town. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe that's something we can look at. Um, I was going to suggest that we have a little meeting about, you know, who's doing what analysis, just so we're not all duplicating efforts. Um, so maybe we can, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, okay, translations. Um, Maureen, you want to talk about the Chinese and Korean? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um... We looked into, per uh, uh, Chad's uh, suggestion, which was a good one, was uh, to offer the survey form in Chinese and Korean um, and to you know reach out to those populations. And so um, we were able to have the survey translated into Chinese. Um, luckily we have a staff person um, are, that was able to um, translate it for us for free. So that was wonderful. And um, Haley then emailed uh, copies to um, area Chinese churches. Um, and I believe Chad is going to pick up some hard copies and help uh, distribute um, the hard copy version. And then um, I reached out to two Korean churches um, the first one, um, uh, the Amherst Korean Church, uh, I spoke to that. Um, I called them and um, he was very nice. I can't think of oh, Moon Young is his name, I think. And he said that um, most of their congregation, if not all, is college age students. But he suggested that I reach out to the Korean, the Zion Korean Church. And so I did, and I had a really nice uh, conversation um, with with that person. I can't think of his name off Aaron, the top of my head. Aaron yes. Nichols. Yeah, and so we had a really nice conversation. So the majority of their congregation members are actually non-Amherst residents. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that there's about five um, members that do live in Amherst. Um, and he said that they have uh, really good English. And um, cause I had said, oh, we're thinking about offering it in Korean. Um, you know, if we do this, could you help sort of spread the word and give it to your members? And, you know, if you have like a email to serve, like, could you help, you know, sort of help promote it? And he had said, oh, those five members are, uh, are, are they know uh, English pretty well and that they wouldn't need it in, Korean and I said okay are you sure and then and then um what else did I say um and then I said oh well if not your church are there any other sort of Korean uh based organizations or other churches in town that I could um that he could recommend that I reach out to and he said that to his knowledge there really is not um there weren't, he couldn't come up with any uh, recommendations for me to reach out to for organizations or churches. And he said that Amherst has a very low uh, population size of, um, of Korean um, sp speaking residents. And he then went on to tell me that they have a space within their church that they're thinking about uh, offering various classes like yoga classes, and um, that it would be, you know, catered to their congregation and to their senior um, members. And I said, oh, that's great. And I had, you know, I mentioned our senior center and I said, I'll let Haley know and perhaps they could connect in the future. Um, so, um, so with that all said, uh, we decided that we would not be translating in Korean, but it was a really good conversation and a connection to um, start. Uh, with the town and that church. So it wasn't um, you know, a fruitless conversation. Thanks. 
I know that the Amherst Chinese Church over on Belchertown Road on the Belchertown line, that is uh, pretty exclusively all students also. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you said that, um, so the survey, the hard copy surveys, um, you're gonna get to that person at the, um, the Zion Church, Maureen. The, the uh, I actually months. offered him that as well. And he said, he, uh, Chad had actually dropped some off and oh, okay. I said, oh, I can provide right. you more. And then I was saying like, oh, I can come by and pick up the completed ones. And then I mentioned that, you know, I could do that or he could drop it off at the bank center. I gave him the address and um, he was like, oh, no, no, we can drop it off at the bank center. That's fine. Um, okay, mm -hmm. great. That's great. Um, Okay. Okay. Um, and okay, the last thing was um, talking about survey analysis. Um, John, I know you had originally said you wanted, you know, students to look at it. And I, I think Mila had offered to help. Um, so I'm just wondering if you know, if that's still the case and should we have a little meeting about who's gonna analyze what and what, you know, or if there's certain questions that you want, you know, more analysis of. Um, oh, you're, of muted, you're muted, John. Um, I'm fine having a meeting to talk about this. Um, I have, been, uh, I don't have any students. Basically okay. the UMass academic year is over and I don't have any students who will do data analysis at this point in time. Okay. Um, I have talked to Mila about it. Um, and uh, I'm assuming that we're gonna do some work together. I actually drafted a plan for what to do with housing data that I wanted her feedback on before I shared it with other people. And uh, she was gonna look at it uh, yesterday or tomorrow. I'm sorry, okay. yesterday, yesterday or today. Um, and I haven't heard back from her yet. Um, the housing data is kind of complicated. I don't know if it's more or less complicated than anything else, but that was the thing that I wanted to start with. Um, I'm perfectly willing to think about what to do with the rest of the data sets um, in collaboration with other people. I don't know how much time Mila has to put into analysis. And at this point, uh, I'm not recruiting anybody else to do that. Uh, so. Yeah, how, I think- How many questions can you ask Google Analytics? Uh, I mean, that's what I thought was gonna be the actual, uh, if you wanna call them chi-squares and all the stats and all that. Isn't that within the Google Analytics? I don't know, Chad, I've never used Google Analytics, okay. so I can't tell you uh, what the capacity is for using that. Um, I think that mostly we'll probably be doing things, um, uh, basic things just with fairly simple tables because if we don't wanna do something that's so sophisticated that no nobody in the audience or very few people could make sense of that. So I think we'll just be doing analysis on spreadsheets and reporting tables that are two by, uh, that have two or three dimensions to them. And, th and that would be it. I, I don't see doing much more than that. Um, again, because I'm, I really don't think there's an audience for it. Um, to give you an example on housing, uh, one of the things I, personally be interested in is the relationship between whether people plan to move out of their current location within the next five years. And if they do, whether that's explained by the number, total number of major or minor barriers they have, and also what the most common barriers are that seem to lead them to want to leave that, move out of their current housing. So that would be an example of the kind of analysis that I would want to see 
on housing that I'm talking to Mila about. Uh, but the first step in that really is to look at how many people actually see themselves moving in the next five years, and then to focus more on those people to see where they want to move to and what their preferences are related to moving, and also what are the obstacles that they're currently facing that are probably motivating them to move. And I, I assume, you know, again, I haven't thought about it, but we can do the same thing with respect to other data. I guess another thing that I'm generally interested in is how we generalize what we see to the larger adult or older adult population of Amherst. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do a random sample survey. So I think with a 50% return rate, we can at least talk about the random sample survey and how it extends to the larger population of Amherst so that we can say not only these are the results that we saw in the surveys that we returned, but these lead us to make the following estimates of people who are likely to be used, looking for different housing out of that population of 5,500 or whatever it is over the next five years. So that's the second thing that I think we need to be looking at um, with respect to housing and with respect to other data as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, Nicole can help with some of this. I think she's probably gonna stay on a little beyond May. Um, and, you know, you guys are way more sophisticated in terms of analysis. So I think it would be great to have your direction on that with her and, um, you know, she can do the filters and survey monkey and all that. Um, well, that would be great, Becky. I do appreciate that because thus far, Nicole has been great. I haven't asked her to do it a lot, but whatever I've asked her, she's done and then gone above and beyond. So yeah. that's terrific. Okay. So, um, so it sounds like you and maybe Chad and Mila and Haley for analysis. I don't know if you want to be involved with that, Nick, Maureen, as well. Um, uh, I can certainly be like part of the email chain. I, I, I would have to look at my, I'm gearing up for a lot of ZBA public hearings. So I don't know if I have the time capacity, to be honest. Okay. Um, anyone else? interested in being involved with that. If Nicole has the time, it would be good if she was in on those conversations as well. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think it would be good. Um, yeah, I can, I can help. Oh, there I you are, Nicole. Nicole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I didn't even see your name there, sorry. That's no, okay. And again, if, Nicole, if you have the time capacity to, to do this, so, um, so it just, just uh, keep that in mind um, for okay. you both, um, Becky and Nicole, if you have the, the time capacity. I know that was a concern expressed by Becky in a few emails. Um, so um, this is going beyond the sort of the, the general scope of the MOU. So I, I just want to make that clear that, that this is your suggestion, Becky, to do, th to do this. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean we can we can go we can go to a limited amount, but um, I think it'd be great to you know just hear from from you guys what what you think would be most useful um, and have some of your direction on that. Um, okay, so yeah, and then otherwise, you know, what we generally do is just print out the, the basic charts from SurveyMonkey um, to see what the overall responses were and how, how those look. Um, okay, so we probably, um, Haley suggested waiting a couple of weeks while some of the rest of the surveys trickle in and to make sure the Korean ones, um, if we get any of those, and the Chinese ones. Um, so give it a couple more weeks. Um, so then that analysis could start probably, I think we were saying May 9th um, to really close it. Um, that's enough time. Um, okay. And then, okay. So the next thing is the listening sessions. Um, 
you want to share that, Maureen? Yeah. So, um, in, so the listening um, in context of whether the listening sessions will be online or in person, Paul Bockelman has given us the go ahead to hold the listening sessions in person um, starting in June. Um, the but he did say that. Um, the first one, which is scheduled for May 23rd for the housing, for housing, he said that he would like that to be held um, uh, via Zoom. Um, so if if folks, uh, I don't know if you had a strong feeling about whether, you know, if, if folks wanted that to be in person, I'm sure we could just push that back into June. But he said, oh, you can just keep that as is and have that on Zoom on May 23rd. And then the, the following ones would be held in person at the Bang Center. And um, Paul then um, suggested that we look into uh, offering a fifth added session in Spanish. And so Haley and I are, um, are looking into, uh, into that as an uh, option and that would be in early fall. And so Haley and I just had a meeting this morning with other staff members of hearing the, um, other staff members have dipped their toes in, in translation services for public forums and whatnot and hearing sort of lessons learned of um, would we have uh, English speaker and then simultaneously have someone translating it into Spanish, or should we seek out someone that could just speak in Spanish to facilitate the meeting and do, um, you know, a Q&A. So we're looking in um, to different um, sort of formats uh, before we um, go about trying to find someone to hire. And so um, State Representative Mindy Dom. Um, allocated money to the town of Amherst for translation services. Um, and so Paul had has indicated that we can tap into that funding as a, as a funding source um, for this. Um, and so uh, we're pretty excited to offer this. Um, and but we're just sort of um, just starting the conversation of just logistics of, of that. And then after we you know hire someone, um, then we will have, um, we would want to come up with a very specific uh, community engagement plan of how do we um, get the word out to our Spanish speaking residents about the event itself. And it would be a combined um, public forum of the sessions one through four. Um, and, um, and then we would have a Q and A. And I, I think it would be a really nice opportunity to you know, get our Spanish-speaking residents to um, you know engage with the town and and to call on to see. I, I personally don't know what other you know of town staff who can speak Spanish, but it'd be wonderful if if we, as part of this sort of research and gearing up for this event, can find out like you know who at the Jones Library can speak Spanish. Are there people in our rec department that can speak Spanish in various you know all our departments so they could come to this meeting and sort of start the conversation um, between the town and and our um, our different residents or not different but Spanish speaking residents. First Church has a ton of uh, Caucasian Spanish speaking speaking people. Um, basically, it's uh, the cadre um, that, uh, you know, helped um, um, uh, Lucio Perez. And so that, okay. that would be a good contact. Um, I, I kind of shoot for the ideal and settle, settle for the real. So, you know, I would suggest that that be done bilingual because many Spanish people are culturally Spanish but speak English. The same with the um, housing. Um, if there's a way to make um, hybrid Zoom and in person, um, again, that's ideal. So people who can't come or won't come uh, could still participate. And, and I was talking to Juana about this topic, Chad, and one thing Juana uh, pointed out, too, she goes to the Catholic Church across uh, the street um, on Sunday morning. She said a lot of the Latinos, not all, she doesn't want to stereotype, but a lot of Spanish um, people that she knows are cannot read. 
So they understand Spanish orally, but just the survey being in Spanish is meaningful, meaningless to them. So just to point mm -hmm. that out. That's really both uh, both Chad and Helen. Thank you. Th that's really good comments. Uh, yeah, um, you know, um, our meeting uh, this morning um, um, was uh, uh, with very various staff members, including Angela Mills, who works in the town manager's office, and she's fluent in Spanish. And she had said that, just as Helen had said, um, she said that the um, I guess it's a Westfield state professor that offers translation services for the Sunday mass into Spanish and um, that many, many of the um, church. Wilma, Wilma Ortiz. Yep. Professor yep. Wilma and, Ortiz. Yep. And she was saying that many, um, you know, reading in Spanish is, is at times difficult um, for members, um, you know, due to, you know, whatever, for a variety of reasons, you know, maybe some of them came to the United States as, as a child and they've been working and uh, I mean there could be numerous reasons but she did did point that out um, you know she raved about that translator um, for St. Bridget's and you know as we're sort of weighing our options of all these you know choices I was saying oh I kind of and she was going on how wonderful she is and she's like a the face of the church of of that congregation of in, in not into the religion but into providing translation services and um that she um i forget the word she described but she can um she captures different dialects in different countries uh you know ecuadorian el, um, el salvador mexican um different dialects of spanish and she does a really good job and i i was like oh well it almost seems like we found the person to provide the translation for our for for this forum but we can cer we'll certainly reach out to her to see if she has interest um but. yeah we've sort of i mean i i think you've talked i guess maureen with staff about the idea of the hybrid Zoom or having an interpreter at the other meetings. And um, I think we kind of landed on just having one forum in Spanish, just because we don't have, um, we, I know CES has a capability to do the simultaneous Zoom translation thing. Um, but I don't know, Maureen, you want to talk more about, I, I think what what you guys landed on was to have one form just provided in Spanish. Yeah, you know, so Angela, she said, oh, uh, providing translation. She was like, that was my entire uh, childhood. And she was going on to say that it, it's 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 pretty exhausting, particularly from the translator themselves. And a lot of times, you know, you have a two hour meeting and you might need to have two translators uh, because it's it's just a lot of energy uh for th that for for the for translation itself um and so i think that it would be um i think it might just be overwhelming to provide translation services for each each of the event and so i think we're uh, leaning towards having one event in spanish really geared towards our um uh, our spanish-speaking residents um, instead of um trying to have a trans translator for each of them. Uh, could you review the other events and when they're planned to take place? Yeah, Here, I'll share the poster. <laughs> Let's see. Um, it's the poster Nicole put together. So these are the, we were proposing, so the first one be May 23rd on Zoom, that's the housing one. Um, Second, social participation, inclusion, communication and technology and civic engagement would be on June 27th, uh, July 25th for transportation, building and outdoor spaces, and then health and community services and public safety on the 20th, August 22nd. I was thinking we might wanna add dementia um, awareness on that one. Um, and then the fifth one would be in Spanish in September. And perhaps those exact dates, especially in August, that might be subject to change. I, I know, Becky, you had you wanted to confirm. Some yeah, dates I've, I've confirmed. So that's what 
I mean, this is what I came up with, unless you want to. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we had also, um, John had expressed interest in the Amherst Affordable Housing Trust being a co-sponsor in the first one. Um, we didn't know if other organizations might want to co-sponsor some of these other ones, and um, particularly Amherst Neighbors, Liz. Mm -hmm. um, and mainly just to sort of get the word out and, you know, make sure your membership comes yep. and stuff too. Yeah, I think co-sponsorship is really valuable. Whenever I've done an educational forum on housing in the past, I've generally looked for at least two or three or four co-sponsors and also asked other organizations in Amherst to get the word out to their members. I think that makes a lot of sense. Do we have any other organizations here, um, let's see, representatives? Um, okay. So Haley, Becky and I can reach out to um, other organizations to add as, as sponsors for individual events or as a series. I mean, I can talk to Earl about Crest potentially oh, yeah. sponsoring the community and public safety uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. What was that, Chris? Uh, that's the new community responding program. Oh, great. OK. Is there any way to be a little more random in the day of week and time of day to um, pick up uh, others who might not be able to attend then? Are you proposing to do them like later in the evening? Yeah, we evening, weekend, one or two, any of them. I mean, I think the challenge staff. really is just for the, the staff time, um, the space at the Bang Center. Uh, Monday afternoons are typically pretty quiet. We can very easily use the large activity room for an event like this. And I can't guarantee that, you know, myself, Becky or Maureen will always have nights and weekends available to, to do these listening sessions. So you yeah, I mean, we, we certainly do evening ones, but also then there's transportation for people. Right. I don't know if that's an issue. But we can certainly look at our schedules and the bank center schedule for like the, the rooms and see mm -hmm. if there's anything that, you know, is a possibility of being flexible. So we can, you know, we, we can look into it and, and get back to you. So it, that is, you know, it's a valid um, mm -hmm. comment. Yeah, we just wanna nail down some dates so we can get the poster out. Um, yeah, so. yeah, you want actually. So the first one is on May 23rd. So we really do want to get this flyer out yeah. kind of as soon as possible, um, just to get the word out and help publicize this. Um, and get that translator. Oh, wait, that's not until that's not until September. Yeah. yeah. So we were thinking about we definitely will have a flyer, its own flyer to promote the fifth one. And we were thinking about like on this flyer, perhaps the fifth, um, uh, the fifth session could be either stated in English as it's uh, as it is now, or stated in Spanish. Um, I don't know if anyone has strong feelings one way or the other. Perhaps, perhaps there's no wrong answer. I'm not really sure. I think if the flyer is going to be going around the bang center and, and we are offering it in Spanish, that one at least should be translated into Spanish. The fifth um, one? The fifth one. Yeah. It seems non-friendly to a Spanish speaker to not have any Spanish on the, yeah, on the flyer. Yeah. And we, okay. And we could easily do that. Um, so thank you. That's, that's, that's the feedback we need to hear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were sort of talking about, do we do the whole thing in Spanish, but then say, you know, we're not offering interpreter state services for the first four, or do we just do the fifth one in Spanish, or do we do a separate flyer for the Spanish one? Um, I think I, I kind of like the idea of just having the fifth one in Spanish translated, or maybe have the text on the left also translated somehow. Um, just to sort of show it's part of that whole thing. 
Someone was about to talk. I don't know who. I'm just, I'm just thinking at the fifth session where you have all everything built into an hour and a half. It kind of seems like if I were a Spanish speaker, I'd feel like I'm being given short shrift. Meaning it should be longer? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, you know, actually another point taken this morning in today's meeting is, is that we should uh, anticipate it to take longer um, to have everyone, to give everyone ample time to speak, to ask questions, um, especially in other languages. So perhaps, yeah, so each of these are hour and a half, it looks like, so maybe that should be two hours or two and a half hours, mm -hmm. but it just shouldn't be yeah. so long that it's like, yeah. we. Yeah. I suggested three hours in this in today in this morning's meeting, and they're like, "No, that's way too long. Everyone will yeah. be exhausted, and they'll want to leave." I think it should be two hours because I think also uh, not to be ageist, but seniors are going to have are not going to want to stay longer than two hours. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I know that's but, why I, I, that's why I was thinking an hour and a half, just because it's it is pretty long. I mean, yeah. usually what we do is like a half hour presentation, and then the rest is people providing comments and then having like a dot exercise where people can go up and vote on what they think priorities are. Um, we wouldn't do that for the Zoom one. <laughs> it's kind of hard to vote with dots on Zoom, but um, I, I would usually like type in comments as they go, but I'm open to suggestion if you think two hours is really would be better. Um, for each of them? The for, for each of them or just the fifth one? Um, I guess definitely for the fifth one, but if, if you think, if you'd rather have two hours for the other ones, we can try that. Um, I think to be safe, it might be nice to carve off two uh, two hours for the space itself. Okay. Um, and if, you know, if it only goes an hour and a half, so be it. Um, but I, I, I don't have any personal opinions one way or the other. My only thought about the first four is that an hour and a half, two hours might make people hesitant to come. Mm, I agree. Yeah. yeah. But, an hour, but an hour and a half is like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. And also it may run over time. So it, yeah, people won't mind if it yeah. runs into two hours, if it's that interesting. Yeah, yeah. That, that's right. That's a good way of thinking it, Rosemary. So just advertise it for an hour and a half, but leave uh -huh. space. <laughs> Leave mm -hmm. space if we need it. I think yeah. that's a good idea. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you could even have a break after that half hour presentation. Uh huh. Five minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah, and then we'll probably want to have some, some kind of, um, well, yeah, if we do an exercise where people go up, that's also a break. But I think we definitely want to, um, you know, before the in-person meetings, we'll want to, um, whoever's going to be speaking, we'll, we'll coordinate and, and think about, you know, what, what the best format is and how to, how to put in enough breaks. Yeah. And um, um, before I forget, Amherst Media it will be recording um, the in-person meetings. Um, so that'll be great. So um I don't know if it'll be live, like on their channel, or if it'll be like you know aired later. But um, that'll be great. So that'll be offered on their on cable TV as well as their website, and and so we should make sure to have their logo on. If we could fit it on the flyer, that'd be great. Or just make sure to fit that in other sort of mark um, promotions. Um. Yeah, and did we talk about food yet? I'm not sure if, um, can we do food in person daily or have snacks or something or do we, you know, separate them out, I think. We have yeah. snacks at the senior center. So we, and I'm always a fan of having some kind of food for people, even yeah. if it's just some coffee and tea, um, something yeah. they can take and you know, sip quietly. Uh, masks are not required at the bank center, but we are mask friendly. If people would like to wear one, they're welcome to do so, but the town has dropped the mandate. Okay. Okay. So we can coordinate that. Um, 
Let me plan the meetings. Um, that's ah. what the sponsors are for. <laughs> ah, <laughs> right. Ah. And I had su suggested this to Becky um, for the first public forum on housing. Um, perhaps that, you know, uh, that Becky, Haley, John, if he's available, and uh, Nate Malloy, who's our senior planner, um, meet. And just kind of, if Becky could send the your PowerPoint in advance to us, just so we can take a look and and just be uh, in particular because it's not because it's housing, but because it's the first public forum, just um, to kind of go through the logistics of of um, of the the meeting um, sort of um, flow and agenda items of like making sure that we're all on the same page of after we do the presentation, then there might be a five minute break and then there'll be a map and people, um, just all the logistics of how you want this to go about just so everyone feels comfortable going into it. Um, so we are at 3.30. Um... Kaylee, do you want to talk about the farmers markets a little bit? Yeah, so I'll be at the farmers market. Uh, myself and some of the firemen will be there uh, the second Saturday of each month, running from May to August. And we'll be helping to promote uh, this project, listening sessions, try to get people interested in attending. If anyone else is free, you're welcome to join us. We're going to do it from about 9 to 1230. You said that was which day? Second? Second Saturday. Okay. So we can have some posters there for you. Um, Again, a kickoff article in the newspaper. I'll talk to Scott and see if we can do that. Um, I can offer some incentives to people to come. You know, I was thinking we could do like a free foot clinic visit for someone or two free Reiki sessions. We'll be offering that mm. starting in May. So those might be a nice way for people to feel motivated to come and attend maybe those could be like door prizes at the forums or something that's great okay um so i think since we're going to be doing the forum in may and we'll have a subcommittee meeting on the survey and another one on the may forum um, we probably won't have this working group meeting another working group meeting before the may forum um, and if you want to talk about dates for these subcommittee meetings right now, or I guess we'll be meet, we'll be probably for the forum, we'll have to talk to Nate, um, but maybe for the um, survey analysis, if we can meet sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Let's see. Do, we, do we want to do that next week or the week of the ninth? Um, yeah, I'm open next week. Let's see. I'm open Monday, Wednesday, the 4th in the afternoon, um, or Thursday morning before noon. Wednesday would be better for me. I don't know about anybody else. That worked for you, John? I'm sorry. Oh, Wednesday, Wednesday. afternoon, like um, yeah, after afternoon. Uh, yeah, and that would be to talk about the housing forum. About the survey. Oh, okay. Analysis, just like what what types of things you are thinking about analyzing and who's doing what. And, that kind of thing. and Nicole, are you available Wednesday afternoon? Yeah, Wednesdays work great. Okay. Do you want to say like Wednesday at one? Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be fine. And uh, if you want, we could um, meet before or after um, uh, and talk about the public forum. Okay. Yeah, with if you want to check in with, oh, go ahead, John. I should say with respect to the public forum, the housing trust will be meeting on Thursday evening, May 12th. And I want to talk about the housing forum with them to both get their endorsement and see if they have any ideas for things that should be part of that conversation. 
Um, Nate Malloy will be there as well as I will. So Becky, if that's possible for you, um, we could use that as a time to talk about the forum and to settle on exactly what we want to do. What time is your meeting? Uh, 7 p.m. Okay. How about you, Maureen, is that work? No, I, I have another meeting that okay. Thursday. Um, well, we can meet the next, the following week. Um, I know, um, oh, I was gonna say, I, the, I had a sort of guaranteed time that would work for Nate and I. Uh, I think 10 a.m. on Thursday, May 19th would work with Nate and I. That's pretty close. It is, like, yeah. Um, I Do you but want I to could... just start talking about it next week before or after our survey discussion? And then we can say what we're, you know, we can present, then you'll have something to present to your committee, John, um, as sort of a starting point. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that the what we mostly want to get out of these is feedback from from folks um so we're not going to probably present a whole lot but um you know we can certainly i think it would be great for the housing trust to talk about what your your plans are what you know any good things going on and um well and to me the most important thing related to the housing trust would be the need for a, uh, a rental new rental development that would serve the needs of older adults. Um, you know, there hasn't been anything new in town, particularly when we're talking about affordable housing to serve the needs of older adults. So that's been the focus of what we've talked about. Um, I personally see uh, uh, the new town property at Hickory Ridge as offering an opportunity to do that development. Mm. Okay. Um, and Becky, yeah. did uh, so I don't know if you are still working on your PowerPoint presentation for the housing forum um, or if you would have it in time of, I think we said May 4th would be our, our meeting. It would, if, if it is ready or almost ready, could you share it with us just so we can get a sense of what that part of it would be? And then we can um, get into talking points such as um, what John was getting into. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can make my section pretty brief if you guys want more time to present, you know, sort of because usually what I do is sort of like an overview of the project, um, sort of basic concerns around housing for older adults, you know, housing supply and aging in place, and then look at what the assets are of housing in the community already and, and maybe what some of the challenges are. Um, yeah. So if you guys wanted to fill in that section, that would be, I think that would make sense. Um, Usually we just pull it out of whatever, you know, community reports there are um, and, and any, you know, housing, current housing um, for, for older adults that, that exists in the community and other programs like Northampton or um, Amherst Neighbors is certainly an asset for people aging in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think it would be nice to have sort of a broad brush of housing and then and then we, you know, that we zoom out and then we we're, we're begin to zoom in words. Um, and um, I'm sure that John and Nate and with, uh, you know, guidance from the, the housing trust as a whole uh, could provide, a, you know, a few slides and talking points about that. And if Amherst neighbors, if Liz, if you want to provide any um, talking points, um, th that would be helpful. Um, I, I don't know if that would mean uh, if it would be in the PowerPoint or if that would be um, just, you know, part of the, sort of the Q and A. Um, but Liz, if you have anything specific, you can certainly send us an email. We can try to see if we can incorporate it into the slideshow. Okay. And would it would it um, be helpful if Liz, would you be interested in joining this meeting next week or 
Um, I don't know that I can. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I feel like we have more to say perhaps on the kind of the social piece of it than mm -hmm. the housing piece of it. I mean, I think we have concerns about housing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say this, but I don't think we are the solution to housing. No, um, no. Yeah, I know. And it's kind of like there's there's sort of a, you know, health and community services is sort of and transportation is all about people who right. are aging in place. So that that could also go into that forum instead. Or, you know, we can just sort of say a lot of people are aging in place because there aren't there isn't other there options are. for them. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. leave it at that for the housing forum, because yeah. there may there's probably going to be enough to talk about with the challenges of you know, not having enough housing. Right. right. The phrase aging in place doesn't necessarily mean it's working. Uh, if someone's stuck there, if they have nowhere else to go and they're aging in place, I just talked to someone this morning who's aging in place, but I wouldn't say it's very well uh, yeah. because of the lack of services in the community. Well, the, you know, the, that also comes from that question about, you know, do you feel like it's important to be able to stay in your own home? And most people really want to mm -hmm. until they can't, you know? yeah. Yeah. and then they may not have any options available, but um, yeah. Okay. And so it's what time is it? to students to pay your mortgage. <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely, I mean, that is a program that is out there that, you know, is a possibility. Um, there are programs where people, you know, people get vetted, to live yeah. with older adults and and that's something to think about too. Yeah, no, I do think there's alternatives. Silver nest, that's one of them. Oh, okay. That you're referring to. Did you guys hear in the news, national news, how uh, like a college age student I was looking for housing, it was her first apartment out of from living from living from home and she got placed into a by accident into a retirement oh, yeah. um, complex and she they loved it she loved it and she and, and the seniors her neighbors they all <laughs> loved it and they would stop by and they they all built these uh, wonderful relationships it was such a lovely little article um anyways it amused me um and so what time is the meeting next week on um, wednesday may the 4th 1 or 1 30 i forget what you had said one is what Becky said. Okay. All right, cool. And um, I can't guarantee how long I can stay for that meeting. So if possible, if we could start with the public forum um, and then you guys can delve into the surveys that would be preferred. If possible. Do you wanna, do you wanna meet earlier on the forum, like 1230 or something or? Um, I would rather do that. 12.30, okay, cool. And I will confirm that this time works with Nate. I'm assuming yeah. it works for Nate. Um, okay. And if it doesn't, um, then I, I'll loop back by email. Okay. Um, all right. Great. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah, thanks. thanks for all the work on the survey. And it, it's great to see some of the results coming in. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. definitely. A, a collaborative effort on literally everyone um, from everyone here and 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 from the community itself. So thank you all. All right. Well, we'll see you uh, on May twenty third, if not sooner. And have a great rest of your month. Thank you. Thank you.